By now, you've probably already seen a bunch of M5 MacBook Pro unboxings. And you know that besides the new box smell and the spotless keyboard, there's not much new to see, at least on the outside. From three feet away, it looks just like last year. So if you bring this thing into a coffee shop, nobody's ooing and owing your new MacBook. Come on, Apple. All kidding aside, performance upgrades are what we care about most. And it's what's under the hood that got the biggest upgrade this year. Speaking of the hood, it's got the same exact chassis and cooling system as the M4 MacBook Pro. So with a more powerful chip, are we gonna get overheating or throttling or worse battery life when we're doing dev things that actually matter? Like building code, running Docker or running local LLMs? Well, we'll see. The short version, the M5 keeps boosting single core power while also speeding up multi-core tasks. They've really pushed that single core performance and now every single core is faster so everything's gonna be faster here's geekbench single core 4306 is what i got that signals everyday snappiness in things like javascript heavy applications multi-core shows how fast you can handle real parallel jobs like docker spins or heavy code compiles apple silicon has come a long way since the m1 and that's good news for your dev setup you can expect shorter builds smoother container work and quicker hot reloads and remember the base model 14 inch macbook pro still only has just one fan. The larger ones that are not out yet, they're gonna have two, most likely. With one fan under marathon loads, that could mean losing a bit of top performance. Once things get hot, it'll throttle, usually with a five to 10% dip compared to peak benchmarks. One other thing before we move on to dev tests. The SSD speeds are insane. They're much faster on this since Apple adopted PCIe Gen 5 in this one. One thing to note here is disk speed does depend on the size of the drive because higher capacity models have more NAND chips for the controller to access in parallel, so they deliver higher read-write speeds than lower capacity versions. Here I've got the one terabyte model, and these speeds are crazy. Here you go, the regular Blackmagic disk speed, 5,894 megabytes per second write, and 6,497 read. I also like to use Amorphous Disk Mark, which gives you a little bit more of a breakdown. For sequential, we're getting 7,106 for read and 7,255 for write. This is sequential, so if you're copying a large file. Now the lowest random score, we got 74 megabytes for read and 44 for write. This matters more for when you're compiling code and moving lots of little files around. For reference, the previous generation M4, the 512 gigabyte machine had speeds of only 2,600 megabytes write and 3,300 read. Huge difference. Compare that to my daily driver M4 Max. The sequential write speed is much faster than the M4 Max in both tests. The read speed is about the same, but the random speed in write and read is actually faster on the new ones with Gen 5. That means your compilations are gonna go just a tiny bit faster. Not super much faster, but it helps super much. I probably shouldn't say that anymore, by the way. Also for reference, the M2 Max from two years ago, three years ago now, I guess, <laughs> with a two terabyte drive, the read speed was 5,000 megabytes and the write speed was 3,200 megabytes. We've come a long way. Meet the Ugreen NAS DH2300, your private always on backup and file hub. Cloud convenience without cloud costs, store data locally, keep full control and skip those crazy monthly fees. This thing solves storage limits fast, up to 60 terabytes. That's enough for 20 million photos and 40,000 movies. It works with a wide range of third-party hard drives, so expanding capacity stays affordable. Protect what matters. Automatic iPhone photo backups prevent accidental loss, and time machine support keeps your MacBooks recoverable with set and forget confidence. You can move files faster than typical cloud uploads on home internet, with one gigabit transfers can reach up to 125 megabytes per second. A one gigabyte file in seconds, so large videos and project folders don't slow the day down. Share securely. Create separate accounts, set precise permissions, and enable quick NFC login. Teams and families get simple access on Windows, macOS, Android, iOS, and even TV at home or remotely on the go. Get started quickly. A guided first run walkthrough has you up and running in about 10 minutes. Push pull trays make installing drives really simple. Keep your data safe even if the drive fails. RAID redundancy is included beyond simple mirroring. So upgrade storage, speed, and peace of mind all in one step. Check the link in the description and use the code for 20% off. Same price as Black Friday right now. 
for my front end developer friends, Speedometer is a test I like to use. It's a browser benchmark and it simulates real web app interactions. Holy moly, this is more than 10 points higher than I got on the M4 Max. This is a result of the new single cores in the M5 chip. By the way, M4 Max got 49.1, M4 47.4, M4 Pro 45.7. Going back to M2, I got 40. So we're almost 20 points higher than the M2 generation of processors. Jetstream 2, another test I like to use. Another browser benchmark that blends many JavaScript and WebAssembly tests. Parse, compile, regex, JSON, crypto. Not that crypto, cryptography, all right? All those get individually ran, and then I, we get a single score, 642. <laughs> that is really nice. The UI is gonna be super snappy here, which is good for macOS Tahoe, I suppose. You're gonna need that. Now for iOS and macOS developers, Xcode Benchmark is a standardized Xcode project. There's over 70 Cocoa Pods mixed in with Swift and Objective-C and C++ in here. We've been doing this one for a long time. Now, of course, this test does have to be maintained and updated for every version of Xcode, so it runs. So there might be slight variations, just to give you that little warning there. But this stresses the CPU and does a clean build. And I got 147 seconds here. You can take a look at some other scores right in the repository there. I'll link to the repo down below. But in my own tests, the M4 had 141 seconds. So the M4, the base model was actually a little bit faster, a few seconds faster than this, which is kind of surprising to me. And I ran this a few times here, but perhaps that's due to the difference in Xcode. M2 Max, I got 127 seconds. And then we get into the Pro and the Max models from the previous generation. M4 Pro got 94 seconds. And M4 Max, my daily driver machine, 81 seconds. Those, the Pro and the Max have a lot more cores to work with. So this is a multi-core compilation. Therefore, they're gonna be naturally a lot faster. I'm also a .NET developer, so I did a large .NET build. This is a build of 100,000 namespaces and classes. It's a little test that I wrote. And this one is different because it's a memory intensive compilation. Now I built this test after I tested the M4 last year, but I did test this on the MacBook Air, which doesn't have a fan. So it's going to be a little bit different. The 16 gigabyte and the 32 gigabyte versions. This one is a 32 gigabyte MacBook Pro version. So the 16 gigabyte M4 MacBook Air gave me a result of 94 seconds and 69 seconds on the 32 gigabyte model. The M5 MacBook Pro built this in 60 seconds. So we've shaved 10 seconds off of pretty long compilation already using this new chip. Pretty nice. We've done some compilations. Now this is a Python interpreted code run and it's the Mandelbrot test. Let's kick it off, boom. Now this is a test that computes a large fractal at a fixed size using multiple processes. And it hammers all the CPU cores with pure number crunching. It's a great proxy for multi-core throughput. Still running. The previous results I got were 17 seconds on the M4 Pro, 14.6 seconds on the M4 Max. Those have a lot of cores, so they're gonna be quick. And 29 nine seconds on the M4. So that's the number we're trying to beat. Mm, 28.6, okay, not that great. Not that much of an improvement, but I'm gonna run it again. And also this time I'm gonna look at some thermals. By the way, there is the 10 cores hard at work. It's using all the efficiency cores, all six of those, and all four performance cores to execute this task. You can see those little green soldiers marching on. I'm starting to hear the fan. You know what, I'm actually going to increase here. We're down to 30 seconds, folks. 30 seconds for the second run? What does that tell you? It's telling me that there is some throttling going on here. Yeah, and maybe. Maybe. Let's run this a little bit longer. Has it top so far says the throttling is a no. Has it top hasn't been updated for a while though. Now, since this is a small chassis, the 14 inch, and it only has one fan, the chances are much higher that this is gonna throttle at some point, whether you're using a uh, machine learning tasks, which require a lot of power, or CPU bound tasks that are really intense like this one. We're still not throttling, which is good, but here's what the surface of the machine looks like. We're okay on the pads here, not as cool as they can be. 33 is fine, it's warm. Now look at that hot spot right over there. That's telling me that that's where the fan is, the single fan, and we're up to 46 degrees up there. That's actually, oh, 47, that's actually pretty warm, right over here. Yeah, that's where the, um, the blower is coming out. And there is a little bit of a warm spot right in the middle at about 42 degrees. Ooh, getting up to 49 degrees up there. That's uh, almost at the maximum that's allowed. 50 degrees is the max. Well, it says no throttling yet, but let me run that test one more time while this thing is pretty warm right now. 
This is an intense test. Look at that. And we got about 30 seconds. That's showing me that it's not throttling even under intense conditions like this. I'm sure there's probably ways you can get it to throttle. Uh, my room is regular temperature here. If it's a little bit of a warmer environment or if you're outside in the sun, then you're gonna see some issues. Now switching gears, one more thing that makes this a special and unique release is that each GPU core got a neural accelerator. What does that mean? Well, if you're gonna be using the neural engine, this is gonna help out. Big gains with ray tracing, big gains with graphics processing. What if you're using LLMs on the GPU through um, MLX, for example, or through Llama CPP. Tools like Olama and LM Studio use Llama CPP and MLX. And the way that works is first there's a pre-fill stage and then there's a decode stage. The decode stage has been pretty good on Apple Silicon throughout history, throughout its short couple year history. The pre-fill stage, that's the first stage, has been notoriously not that great. Let's put it that way. Well. Now they're paying attention and they're improving that stage as well. But there's also improvements to memory bandwidth on this chip, which is where the decode stage comes in. And this is a little test called Stream. This test has been around for ages. It's a memory bandwidth test. And here we're seeing about 142 gigabytes per second speed, which is pretty close to the 153 theoretical. Here I'm using Apple GPU info to query what the GPU bandwidth is. And there it is, 153 on the chip here. So we got improvements in prefill, and we got improvements in decode all on this little chip, which makes me think the M5 Pro and the M5 Max are just gonna be even that much better. By the way, currently the M4 Max, my daily driver has a memory bandwidth of 500 something, 530 is it? 516, I don't know, somebody will correct me. Significantly more than the base models. But check out Amorphous Memory Mark here. This is an actual test of read and write speed for memory. So it's gonna be a little lower than theoretical. On read, we were getting 89 on the M5 and 133 gigabytes per second on write speed. The M4 Max is showing 144 gigabytes per second read speed and 435 on write. Huge difference there. Now this difference really shows up when you're starting to do LLMs, for example, if you're using it as a coding assistant. So I ran my automated LLM test, which queries a server, an LLM server out of LM Studio is a tool that I often use here. It's pretty easy to set up. And I created a script that automatically queries it with different prompts. I have a set of probably 16 prompts here or something like that for long architecture prompt, programming, non-programming, repo prompt with 44,000 tokens for a context, another long programming context prompt. This is pretty huge actually. So I have a variety of prompts here. So far I only ran it against GPT OSS 20 billion, but I'll be doing more tests for sure. So stay tuned for that. But here are the results for that. Look at that M5 just totally killing the M4. What a huge difference there. The M1 is in yellow, by the way. The M4 is in brown. Now, mind you, I wrote this test after I had the M4 MacBook Pro. This is the M4 MacBook Air. A little bit of difference there. No fans. This one does have a fan. Much bigger performance for the M5. Medium architecture prompt is the one I typically compare. 38.8 tokens per second there on the M5 compared to 15 point four on the m4 macbook air what about the m4 max that one is a little bit more 102 tokens per second over there i'll be doing more model comparisons when the m5 pro and the m5 max launch and maybe the m4 ultra we'll see about that stay tuned for that i was also curious about that neural engine and i haven't tested that for a bit i have this project that actually a commenter reached out to me and provided this thank you very much he's been watching the channel for a long time this is basically a comparison using different algorithms for the neural engine the gpu and the cpu and if i run one of these just to give you a demo here look at that neural engine popping up right there that's how we test the neural engine using core ml you can't just do it using llama cpp unfortunately you have to use platform specific apis and libraries and then on the mac it's core ml so here's one of the results i got this is the dense net 121 keras application and the rps which is more like frames per second not tokens per second because we're not generating tokens in this case 1091 compared to the gpu 148 and then on the cpu it's obviously lower 97 there here's a second test 
just finished 947 on the A&E, 408 on the GPU, and 82 on the CPU. These are open source, so you can probably download them and run them yourself. So overall, I'm really excited about this new lineup. I know I say that every year, but every year it's getting better and better. And this time Apple just did it without any shenanigans. They just launched it. Here you go. It's a new one and it's a lot better. I've actually been considering using this for a while instead of the M4 Max, but that one has 128 gigs of memory and my video editing stuff requires that when Premiere Pro suddenly takes up 100 gigabytes in a project. Yeah. So this one only has 32 gigs, which is going to be the limiting factor. But the M5 Pro is looking very interesting this year. Next year, we'll see. If you like this video, give it a like. I'd appreciate it. Uh, it does take a lot of work to do this. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.